<sighs> Hi everyone, rules are rules here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Blade album 333. This is the latest full-length LP from Drain Gang singer and rapper. Blade. This is the second release within the span of a few months from Blade, but with the COVID pandemic still lingering on, what else is there for artists to do right now other than drop more music? Of course, what I'm referring to is Blade's Exeter mixtape, which dropped back in April, a project that is not one of my favorites of the year, but still managed to surprise me. Mostly because in the past, I just haven't been able to stomach Blade's work, particularly the album Red Light. The grating auto-tune on that record, the inexcusably bad singing, the one-dimensional production. I've done a review, it's out there, my thoughts on this record are out there. But to my ears, by contrast, Exeter at least seemed like it was onto something. With more lush and surreal production, the vocals sounding a lot less awkward and more alien, strange, almost robotic at points instead because of how heavily they were manipulated, how many effects they were being fed through. So going into 333, I guess, I was just hoping to hear a lot of the great ideas from Exeter built upon, but maybe with some better songs and vocals. And while I didn't get everything I wanted with this album, I can at least acknowledge that it sounds like the next step in a stylistic shift for Blade. Suddenly the music, and especially the singing, sounds a lot more gender-bent, androgynous. Much like they are on an Echo 2K record, it's interesting to hear how their ongoing collaborations are impacting one another. And while Blade still firmly remains in this lane of hyper-futuristic, somewhat melancholy cloud rap, he does seem to be pulling more from ambient pop and art pop on this record. Take the opener, Wings in Motion, whose acoustic forlorn intro sounds like the start to a microphone song. But then these guitars are wrapped lovingly in these wondrous, fantastical synthesizers. I enjoy the tune of the song quite a bit as well, even if I don't necessarily see Blade's voice as being strong enough to carry it, it's not so far off the path of pitch that it's like ruining it for me. Then moving on to the very cute Don't Worry, which definitely sees Blade moving into a poppier direction. The synth leads and the beat on this one are so sweet and groovy. Not to sound like a broken record, but I do wish the vocals were stronger fronting this one, but still, I think the chorus really does pop in this one, despite it not having a strong contrast from everything else on the track. There are just so many moments on this record where I'm left wanting more, like on the song Valerie, which lyrically does come off like an impassioned display of appreciation, devotion, and attraction. The mention of shaking hands and temptation, I don't doubt Blade's genuineness for a second here. But then once again, the singing is so slovenly, words as the song progresses are just rapidly folding over each other. So I continue to have these long established issues with Blade's singing, yes, but the more I listen to this record, the more my problems with it move beyond just execution and performance. Sure, aesthetically, the music on this project creates a uniquely blissful sound, but that doesn't change the breeziness or the low impact of multiple tracks here. Keys to the City, Hero of My Story, or even the song Noblest Strive, whether it be because these tracks are bland or a little one-dimensional, they just don't leave that strong of an impression for me. And to add to this, occasionally there will be an anomaly in the track list, like Innocent of All Things, where I do respect the lyrics and some of the vocal work from this track, but the instrumental is so faint, so barely there in the background, it's like wallpaper, leaving Blade's singing sounding relatively unsupported. After a while, the sonic passivity of these songs just leaves me feeling cold or just desperate for anything different or exciting. Like the song Hundreds, which features a relatively banging beat, dejected refrain and an absolutely loud and blaring wall of synthesizers, kind of bright and neon colored in their timbre. It seems like an unholy matrimony of shoegaze and SoundCloud rap, but in a good way. You can also mark down Mean Girls as having one of the most infectious choruses on the entire record. Gotta say, I've never heard a song about getting loose, being in the club with the bad girls, with the mean girls, and yet vocally it sounds so androgynous. 
androgynous. I mean, I, I respect the song merely for that. Thankfully, it has other qualities as well that make it enjoyable. Also, shout out to the track Extasia for being one of the most defining tracks of Blade's career. When it comes to Blade's overall sound and style, there is typically an element of ecstasy to it. So recording a smooth, melodic, and somewhat dreamy synthetic trap ballad in reference to that feeling just kind of makes sense. The closing Swan Lake is also a relatively elegant moment for Blade on the record. With gently crooning vocals and new agey synthesizers, it's essentially an ambient pop oasis right at the end of the album. But still, at the end of the day, I only really enjoyed about a handful of tracks, legitimately enjoyed about a handful of tracks from this project. Frankly, everything else I just had trouble engaging with or just didn't really get much out of. Now, of course, there are elements of Blades and Drain Gang sound that I enjoy and I admire. But beyond the pristine and icy veneer that is unlike many other things out there today, I don't find a whole lot to chew on. And once again, I even found the production to be significantly less experimental than it was on Exeter. I think uh, this release is a lot more in line aesthetically with Blade's core albums, though I do think he pulled off that blissful sound a bit more effectively. Feeling a strong 5 to a light 6 on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you should check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, music, Blade, forever.